Well, here we have a quick video to assist you in assembling the trainer kit. If you bought the trainer kit, the trainer kit can come in a variety of forms. We already have some videos in our playlist that show you how to build the trainer from your own parts or using one of the other styles of kits. This is an additional instruction video on building the kit that comes with a short box. And this is basically what you get in the kit. You get a split shell box with a front plate and a back plate, four felt pads or something like that for feet to keep from scratching up the tabletop, a couple lengths of red and black wire for general uh, 24 volt DC power conveyance and then of course a power connector. Now I show one here with a black and a red lead already soldered to it. You may or may not get one with it already soldered to it. And then of course a 24 volt DC power adapter and six toggle switches with conductors already soldered to them. The easiest components to destroy if you're not really good at soldering you know, a lot of experience and understand what is too much heat. The easiest thing to destroy is the toggle switches. So that's why I'm currently shipping the kits pre-wired pigtails on them. The second easiest component to destroy is the power jack there that has the red and the black solder to it, specifically the center or coax connect that has the red wire attached to it it's a plastic insulator between the center conductor and the outer. And if you apply too much heat, it will displace the pin and then the plug won't plug into it. And then of course, the front and back plates can also be broken by misusing your drill bit. So let's take a look. This video is an addendum to the previous videos on building a basic trainer. Uh, this is not exactly the same as the ones that we ship out. We do ship out some like this, but you have a project box, six toggle switches, a controller, you have a power jack, and you have some felt pads on the bottom to prevent scratching the table. So we're going to go through the process of putting the kit together. This is what you would end up with, but you would be supplying your own processor. So you're going to have a box, and our box, we have a number of holes drilled in it. As you can see, we have these two holes right here. This one and this one are very critical because that's the spacing to mount the processor. These two holes are not critical. This is a little bit larger hole to bring through eight or nine conductors up to the processor, and this hole is smaller and you'll bring either two or four conductors up through this hole from inside the box. And notice that the, the halves are not the same. This is the half that you want to drill the holes in, not this one. This one has the plastic screw bosses on the bottom. Not that you couldn't do it that way, but this also has the uh, recessed for flathead screws, so when you put it together, they're on the bottom and not on the top. You want that on the bottom. So the first step was to take one of the two plates. And remember that this comes with a front plate and a back plate. So you want to take the front plate and you cannot see it that well. We would have to get it in the light just right so you can see that I scribed a line right down the center of the length and then I uh, put additional marks with a sharp edge exactly three quarters of an inch spaced from one end to the other. And if you do that, then these switches are going to be perfectly spaced across the front of that plate. Also I mentioned that we leave one nut, we leave one nut on the switch and we tighten it down with a wrench, not reef it down, just snug. And then we put the lock washer then we come through and we put the on and off switch plate and then the nut. Now not all of the switches that we send out have the on and off switch plates. 
they're really not necessary because we typically wire them so the on is on the top so that down is off and up is on that's not absolutely necessary more importantly we take and we separate the one half of the conductors so if you look here you'll see that the conductors on this side of the switch have all been bunched together right here and then we took and stripped on just one of these conductors we stripped away about an inch of insulation now it's very difficult to do and sometimes you'll break the wire if you do that but I stripped away one inch of insulation then I took the other conductors in here the other six common off of this side I stripped them back I cut them to this length stripped them back wound them on here and then soldered them and trimmed off the excess and then put shrink tubing on it I think I'll cut the tie wrap off so you can see more clearly so we basically combined six conductors into one so one of them is kept full length the other five were cut off at this length and then wrapped around a bare piece of the master common here soldered and then shrink tubing put over it then the other six conductors we gathered them together used a tie wrap and then we eventually tie wrap them along with the uh, common just to make it look neat in the box with the pre soldered switches you're not going to solder one common across all of the solder lugs on the switch you're going to join the switch wires together then on the other plate which would be the back plate we drilled a 15 30 seconds it's just under a half inch it's an unusual size one that you probably don't have a drill bit for. I used a unibit and a unibit has steps in it they're very popular and you don't want to use a full size bit to drill this hole out because if it grabs enough plastic it'll snap the whole end of this plate right off but you don't want to make the hole too big because you want the uh, bezel or the washer and the nut to be larger than the hole and then of course we soldered a couple conductors on here a red one to the center and a black one to the outside so that's the back plate also in the kit you had two 440 nuts and bolts you have four felt pads maybe not exactly like this but similar and then of course these two screws go with this box to screw it together the next step is with the top of the box we attach the switch plate now remember this is the top we want the switches we want the red or the on to be up so we're going to feed the common remember these these are all joined together one conductor from each switch now I use the if you want to call it the top really it's the bottom if you flip this over I use the bottom lug those are all my commons. It really doesn't matter because there's no clarity for switches. So we're going to feed that common through this large hole. And you see there's plenty of conductor left over. You don't want the shrink wrap to go through the hole. Then we're going to feed these other conductors one at a time through. I fed them through one at a time. If you're not going to use a meter once this box is closed up to determine which wire is which switch, then you want to take and put a little marker on each of these conductors from each of the switch. And remember that when you flip this around, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to match the LEDs and the terminals on the controller so on the finished product here 0 1 2 3 4 5 LEDs 0 1 2 3 4 5 
So you want to either mark those wires or you're going to have to use a meter once this is all closed up and go between the common and each of the individual switch conductors to determine which switch is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now we're going to add, and you can put this on this side or you can flip it over like this. It just depends on how neat and tidy you like your work. And since this is going to go to the other side, I'll put this in first. You see this is kind of cumbersome to work with. And there we basically have the back plate and front plate with the switches and the power conductor. Now we have to add a couple more red and black wires to conductors to carry the 24 volts DC from the DC input terminals on the controller to the back side to the input terminal strip to power the inputs. So we'll take two more conductors and we'll place them So you see now we have a red and black that we've added going from this front corner back to the back corner that's going to be for the inputs. And we can tie wrap those now. It's not really necessary as long as you have enough conductors sticking out on both ends to reach the terminals on the controller. It really doesn't matter. So now we can close the box up. Um, I think I'll add a couple tie wraps first. Before you tighten down that, a tie wrap, make sure you have enough red and black of these the second pair sticking out of both ends before you tighten it down. So that looks like plenty. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this tie wrap. Now you see I have it tie wrapped uh, quite well in two spots here so they're not going to slip they're not going to slip out of the holes when I go to con um, connect these up and then of course Then you slip the other half on and you mount the process. By the way, the processor would have been mounted to this side before you attached all these other things. So you want to attach the processor first. I should have mentioned that. And the reason that you want to do that is that hole right there is very difficult to reach with your thumb to put the nut on the processor if you wait until you've got the switches mounted. Remember this pops right out, so you can pop it back out, mount the processor, and then pop it back in. So there you have it. You put this on, hook these up to your input terminals. Remember this goes to the static terminals on one corner. This goes, all four of these go, two black to negative and two red to positive. Then these are the individual switch wires. There you have it. This is just a little addendum. If you happen to buy one of these kits, by the way, the the, the two halves only go together one way. So they're they're tongue and groove. There you go. You run two screws in. Put your four pads, one on each corner, and this is what you end up with. Remember, you want this switch to light up this LED. So this is input 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you want the output LEDs right next to the switches to make it easier to work with. And remember, it doesn't matter whether this power jack goes on this side or this side or even in the middle. You can put it anywhere you want.
that wraps it up for that kit. But we do have more kits to come for Compact Logix using RS Logix 5000. So we will have more kits in the future.